All right, well, here she finally is, my Fire Trap slash Frostblink Elementalist League starter for 3.21 Crucible League. This video and the resources alongside of it represent the culmination of almost three weeks of work. If you want a lot more background on the build and the evolution and all of that, please check out the previous few videos that I posted. You can kind of see the way that I have worked through this build, done some problem solving, and evolved it from starting in Krangled League on a Raider to this build here. This truly is the strongest, most effective League starter that I've ever played or made. The idea of an Ignite Shaper Flames based Elementalist is nothing new. Playing it on Fire Trap isn't anything new. But what I've done here is combine a couple different concepts into what is my platonic ideal of this archetype. In the background right now, you are seeing a demonstration of this build with almost no flasks, with no expensive gems or jewels and just with a tabula, doing a 40% Delirious T16 map with a ghosted up Veritani at the end, just to try to hammer that point home. This build on one to three divines can get you all of your void stones very easily, killing Maven and Uber Elder, is very solo self found hardcore friendly. In fact, it is based on a solo self found hardcore framework. And if you wanna take it even further for not that much currency, obviously the prices will totally go out of whack if this build is popular enough, but since it is so solo self found friendly, Without investing too much, you can scale this into Ubers. Not just Ubers, but very comfortable Ubers and almost all of the content in the game without breaking the budget. So let's get started. Alright, so you clicked on the video, you probably saw the length of it. Don't worry, you can look at the timestamps and see what it is. What we did yesterday on stream is I actually did a full walkthrough of all of the gear, the overview of the build and everything. And I cut that down to an hour, you know, nice and short. And that is what the back half of the video is. What this is really is I'm going to do a quick overview of the build, just talking about high level concepts, things to look out for, things to watch out for. I want to do something a little bit different. I really want to emphasize here that this is a tried and true well-known, well-established, very powerful archetype. If you've played Wave of Conviction Elementalist before, scaling into Ethereal Knives, even scaling through Armor Brand Cremation, and other builds within that archetype, this is just tried and true, and it's very well-known. The unique thing that I'm doing here is we're using Frostblink actually to clear. This is actually kind of like a Frostblink build that happens to use Fire Trap for the single target, but it doesn't roll off the tongue as well. So what I really want to emphasize here is don't use the POBs, and there are five of them, <laughs> don't use the POBs as rote things to explicitly copy paste. As always with the content that I try to present is I want to make this a teaching opportunity for you to improve your skills and knowledge in the game. So while if you do choose a POB to your taste and you directly copy it, you should have a pretty good time. I really want you to take in the idea that this is a customizable archetype that you can play however you want. You can very easily achieve in solo cell found within a couple days about 5 million dot DPS, which will feel really, really comfortable, all with solo cell found achievable uniques. You can scale it into something very hardcore viable if you'd like to. In fact, I want to show off really quickly right here in the most recent gauntlet, someone hit level 96 with a fire trap elementalist that I was actually pleasantly surprised is very similar to what my configuration is. That's obviously spectacular news. This is gauntlet viable even if you want to play it. Obviously go that direction, customize it for that. But I want to emphasize that what I'm presenting here is a template for you to customize and play it for your taste. Please don't just try to copy paste exactly what's there without thinking about what is there and why. And that is what the entire back half of the video is. It's just trying to teach you about the items. I go over how to craft them and how you can think about how they go into the build. In the description below are five different POBs. Regarding leveling, we have a drop down right here that takes you all the way from Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, all the way down to at level 69, you can choose a more offensive configuration or you can choose a more defensive configuration. This is more based on the gauntlet version of the build. Then we have a poverty budget configuration, which is at a maximum of 50 to 100 chaos. It's two one alchemy uniques. You know, maybe they're like 10 chaos on league start. Very easy to get uniques and just absolute bottom of the barrel items. This is going to be your starting point. And as you can see, it has 5.2 million DPS at about 50 to 100 chaos invested. Even if the searing touch right here ends up being a little bit expensive, you can use two singularities. These things are bottom of the barrel, dirt cheap, still 4 million DPS. You can chance these yourself in solo cell found very, very easily. So don't worry about that. We have a low budget configuration. This is between one and five divines. 
Obviously, the price of the Skin of Lords will totally skew that. Use a regular rare body armor if the Skin of Lords is, you know, difficult to get on League Start. It probably will be, but this is roughly one to three divines. This POB will at least get your Searing Exarch and Eater of Worlds down very, very easily, and is also roughly comfortable for Maven and Uber Elder. And then we have the end game configuration, which is what my build is right now. I can't even estimate prices with this. Obviously, the demand is crazy on League Start. People are going to be sniping things up if this build is popular. You know, I have no control over that. And as you'll see later, I will emphasize how easy it is to craft most of these. This is the aspirational POB. But right now, when I put this build together, just for reference, it cost me between 30 and 50 divines. Not cheap, but not crazy. And this configuration can run 100% delirious, everything, whatever you want. You can even customize it to do wave 30 simulacrum or whatever you need to do. And this is the aspirational configuration. And as you can see, we also have these unused items here. I encourage you to look at the unused items do the drop downs here. I don't have pre-configured gear layouts, but I want to encourage you to look at the items that I have in here that are unused that you may want to consider using as alternatives. And then last up is just that POB from the Zizzer and Gauntlet right here. This got to level 96 in Gauntlet. Not much more I can say about that. If you want to go really, really tanky, consider looking at something like this. All right, in addition, what I've been working on for the past few days, quite a bit. Not just me though, but Havoc616, you know, that Havoc, he's been working with me on the leveling guide right here, been taking his feedback, and he also will have a showcase video that I will have linked in this document right here. It'll also be in the description below. If you want to see one of the best speedrunners in the world playing this build from Act 1 to Act 10 and a demonstration of the best possible way that you can level this build, that showcase will be right there. Definitely show him a lot of love, subscribe to his channel. He has been invaluable in helping me, particularly putting together the early configuration for this build. This guide is 22 pages of pictures and walkthroughs. I'm not like a type A personality. I try to make it as organized as I could. I also try to make it kind of fun. Something that you can follow along with if you are totally fresh to leveling through the ax and it'll tell you what to link, when to do some flat damage crafts on your gear and what to do to get you to act four where the build doesn't really have to change anymore. We're basically fully complete with the build by the end of act three. Once you kill Dominus, you can essentially cruise until the end of act 10. And again, Havoc has been instrumental in helping me with the routing and making sure that this is gonna be as beginner friendly as possible. This document is in the description below. Hopefully this really helps people get through the ax. There's already a lot of interest. The Havoc Showcase will be done sometime today. That link will be updated and it'll be in the description as well. Oh, the other thing that I wanna say about the POBs, Path of Building has not updated yet. So there are a couple things that are kind of missing. I don't want to download the fake JSON and you know make people have to download stuff from GitHub. So unfortunately at time of recording, these POBs are 3.20. I'll update in a pinned comment and everything when it gets fully updated. All right, that's a lot of preface. I just wanted to show you guys all of the resources that I have available. I really wanna hammer home what's most important about understanding what I'm presenting here for the resources, how I want you to think about this build. Let's do a quick little overview of the build. Everything in the item and gem discussion at the end of this video, the back half of this video, goes into so much detail about the way that I like to think about this build, the way that I've customized stuff. That's really most of the build guide. But let's just do a quick little overview of the build, what makes it tick, and why you know my version of it I think is so special. So the key here is we have two primary skills. And luckily, one of them is our mobility skill. Fire Trap is an incredible skill. If you've never used it, what it does is it's a trap. You throw it on the ground. When it activates, it'll do a hit, but then it will leave burning ground below the enemy for 1.75 seconds. And that can be scaled by duration. Since we are an elementalist, we have Shaper of Flames. If you've ever played an Ignite Elementalist, you know, this is the node. What this says is we will always ignite. We don't have to scale crit chance or chance to ignite anywhere else on the tree, which really offloads a lot of the resource investment into allowing us to just go for damage or defense instead of having to get crit chance or chance to ignite. Not only that, but as long as the hit has more fire damage than any other type, then it'll get a 25% more damage multiplier on the ignite, which makes it much, much bigger. So what this allows us to do is by scaling any burning damage, burning, think of it like a rectangle, and then ignite is a square, it is a subset of burning. That means that the burning ground and the ignite as we scale burning damage, like awakened burning damage support right here, they both will scale alongside of each other. It's almost like we're double dipping. So anything that says increased fire damage, increased burning damage, not damage with ignites. Damage with ignites is only the ignite. 
but anything that says fire burning damage or fire damage over time, that will scale both of those dots. And as you can see, we can hit very high damage numbers by adding up the burning ground and the ignite DPS. And then the other thing that we're doing that is kind of like my unique twist on this is Frostblink is our clear skill. Frostblink actually hits very, very hard. It's actually a legit spell for doing on hit. As you can see, it has very large flat cold damage on it, as well as 180% effectiveness of added damage. And then the unique characteristic that Frostblink has is the cooldown recovery rate will increase as you Frostblink near more monsters, either out of or into packs of monsters. So as long as you are doing your Frostblink efficiently in or out of packs of monsters, the cooldown will be very, very fast and you can nearly spam it. And then what we're doing is we're linking our Frostblink with cold to fire support. Like I said earlier, as long as we're doing more fire damage than cold, it gets 25% more damage on that ignite. And we are linking that with ignite proliferation support, which means that even when the monsters are dead, there is an ignite pool on the ground and we get really nice proliferation that can clear the entire screen. Also the mobility that we're doing is leap slam and Frostblink. What we wanna do is leap slam occasionally Make sure that you're always taking at least a couple steps so the leap slam doesn't have that slow animation. As you can see, if I spam it, there's like a little bit of a startup animation, but as long as I wait a couple seconds, it's almost always instant as soon as I tap the key. Since Frostblink is always an instant skill, that means I can actually animation cancel out of the leap slam and do my frost blink while I'm in midair. And then as long as I wait a couple steps after my next leap slam, I can get very, very high mobility. And this is actually crucial for leveling through the axe very efficiently. Even with the nerf next patch to the low level scepter bases for their attack speed, this is still probably the best mobility option that we have. But anyway, basically what you wanna do is you wanna just frost blink into a pack of monsters and you can see it gets really fast cooldown. Look at this cooldown, very fast. As long as you frost blink into a pack of monsters, like look how slow it is if I don't, and that's the key. And then as you can see, is on the ground, the enemies will stay on the ground and there's an ignite pool on the ground. And as long as they're burning, the monsters that walk over it will still burn and die. Um, well, sometimes they get resurrected if they have that attribute. So yeah, if I can bring monsters over here, yep, you can see that these guys are dying as they're walking on the, uh, the burning ground. And that is the key with the Ignite Proliferation with our Frostblink. And at higher levels of investment, you can see that my Frostblink is doing about 2.5 million Ignite DPS for a total of 9.6 total damage per Frostblink, which is enough to kill all blue packs and many rares as well with Frostblink alone. So the actual way that we play this build is I very rarely throw fire traps. It's really just all about the Frostblink and moving forward, walk a couple steps, leap slam, and then just Frostblink into packs of monsters. And then like I messed up right there and then my Frostblink was on cooldown so I can throw a fire trap and then, you know, then they'll die really, really quickly. Sometimes you mess it up, it's okay. It's just, uh, you know, it's a happy little accident. And then you can just adjust based on that. And then as you can see, as the monsters walk over the burning corpses, they will just die. And that's really the cadence of what we do here. I'm gonna go into more detail later on when I talk about the Eye of Malice in the gear overview, but I just wanna really hammer this home. This build has negative 136 to fire resistance. We have two curses, we have combustion, we have scorch ground, and a very strong exposure from being an elementalist. All of those together is negative 136 resistance, and the way that Eye of Malice works is that gets multiplied times 1.5. It just multiplies, whether it's negative or positive, times 50%. So negative 10 res becomes negative 15 res. So negative 136, you know, we're up against the negative 200 negative res cap. So even Ubers that have positive 50 res, they're still gonna have like negative 120 something. There are occasional situations where this can kind of bite us, particularly in Simulacrum, you'll run up against monsters, you know, plus 80 res, additional res restrictions, stuff like that, you know, curse immune, whatever, then they're just gonna be a pain in the butt. So you may want an alternative helmet for doing Simulacrum. But besides that, we can do all of the content in the game with generally pretty achievable gear. And yeah, I don't know how much more I can sell this build. You know, it started, I just found Fire Trap in Krangled League when I was playing the Raider and I couldn't find another skill that felt good. Fire Trap by itself, it just scales so much single target. It made Krangled League playable for a couple days. <laughs> If that doesn't sell you, I don't know what will. Also really want to encourage you to join the Discord and join me on stream, ask questions. I want this to be a launching off point for you to learn more about the game, understand how things work, and not just look at these as rote templates to copy paste. But I do want to provide enough resources that even as a full beginner, you can put this together. Like I said, these resources will be evolving. POB has not updated yet, but hopefully by cross-referencing what I've provided here, asking questions, learning, you will become a better Path of Exile player and you will just have a really good time in 3.21 Crucible. Honestly, with the power that we're going to get with the passive trees on our weapons here, 
I think that this build is going to be ridiculous. The way that I'm thinking about it right now is like these relics are really strong, right? This is a great relic. If the passive tree on a weapon was as was only one relic worth of power, right? That'd be kind of disappointing. If it's at least two relics worth of power, right? If I get 4x the damage off my relic, you know, two times two right here, right? Like the damage spike off of that is like, it's kind of mind blowing. I actually think this is pretty awesome. This build barely got touched by the patch notes. My tree's kind of scuffed up right now because I was doing that demonstration with the no gear equipped. But all we're going to do is pass down to reflexes and down to mage bane right here. And then we're going to use a mana reservation cluster right here. That is the only change that we really have to make after the changes in the patch notes. Everything else, this build is basically untouched. Really, it is one of the smoothest, most fun, most bang for the buck, most power for the divines build that I've played. Soul Cell found hardcore friendly, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, people did ask for a couple things. Uh, map mods it can't do. Reduced recovery rate is a pain in the butt. Doesn't feel good when we're using Eldritch Battery. Avoid elemental ailments. Don't do that. We want to ignite them. Kill all the bandits because we want those two points. Pantheon, Brian King early. Later on when we're elemental ailment immune, use Solaris, Lunaris, depending on when you're single or multiple target. And then for the miners, I like Rislatha or Rallakesh, depending on your own personal preference. Hopefully that's enough preamble. Hopefully that sells you on the build. Even if you don't end up playing this, I do hope you have a great 3.21 Crucible. Huge thank you to all the patrons and all the new patrons that have joined. It's been wild over the past couple of weeks. All the support's been incredible. I want to have as much out here for you guys to have the best league that you can. I hope you love this build as much as I do. Enjoy the rest of the video. It's a ton of detail about all of the gear, the way to understand a lot of this stuff. You know, I hope it's enough to really encompass everything that you need to know to play this build. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the stream soon. Bye. What is the gear? That's what we're going to focus on right now. I just want to talk about the gear. We're going to talk about options. So we're going to start with the weapons here. The ideal weapons are very close to this. This is basically what you want to go for. The key with this build is with Fire Trap for a single target, uh, it scales incredibly off of levels up until level 30. And so you want to get to level 30. I'm actually over invested into levels with this build right now. And uh, we'll go when we talk about amulets, we'll see in a second. You only really care about getting fire trap to level 30. More of that is kind of a waste of resources. And so it, it gets more than I think almost any other skill in the game for damage per level. It gets like 15% more instead of the 10% more that a lot of other skills get. Fire trap, when you throw it, and I have an MTX that makes it uh, makes it look kind of bluish but it will leave a burning ground on the ground when it activates. And this burning ground, let's see, burning ground is uh, 13 million on the burning ground. The ignite is uh, the ignite is another 21 million. Ignite's actually most of it. So we're kind of taking advantage. It's not exactly double dipping, but we're able to scale both the burning ground and the ignite. We're doing two different damages over time at the same time, and we're able to scale both of those at the same time. As soon as we get the fire trap to level 30, the number one priority with gearing your character is getting your fire trap to level 30. And the way that we do this is the easiest thing is a skin of the Lords. Also, you can do things, and we'll show this when we go over the body armor specifically. We can very, very easily craft a plus one, plus one body armor. I bought both of these bases this morning for five and 10 chaos each. This is a very, very easy craft. It's uh, I, I bought these bases already like this. I didn't even have to roll for it. Um, and you can alteration spam if you want to. We can go for a plus one, plus one, which is almost as good as the skin of the Lords. We just want to get fire trap to level 30. That's the number one goal. So, you know, we can put empower in there, all that, whatever gets it to level 30. After that, and this is where the scepters come into play, all we really care about scaling. And this is why this, the scepters are cheaper than for other builds that may be using fire trap or similar skills, is it is actually very easy for us to hit a level 30 fire trap and we don't need more levels. We don't need to roll our scepters for plus one fire, plus one all, go for those fractures or anything like that. I actually bought this base this morning for a grand total of one divine. And there were a bunch, there were dozens available. And obviously, if the demand goes up, this build is very popular. Beginning of the league, that may be very expensive. But you can go for any fractured suffix or even no fracture and just spam single scorched fossils. That's all you have to do until you're happy with suffixes. Then you can craft fire damage or increase damage, damage over time on the prefix. Even better would be something like suffixes can't be changed, use a veiled chaos orb, and try to get that increased fire damage on the prefix. But you can have a stepping stone scepter for very, very little investment, even in soul cell found friendly. Uh, worst case, even if you don't have scorched fossils, you know, you can do reforged fire right here. Purple juice is the, ch I think purple juice is the cheapest juice. No one wants that juice. Uh, it is not yellow juice, luckily. And you can even just do reforged fire. Not as good as Scorch Fossils, but you can do that. So yeah, you can use an Essence of Anguish here. So the flat fire damage does scale our Ignite. 
you can do this um, until you're happy with your suffixes, and then you can just craft on the prefix, increased fire damage, and you can have a very, very good... So just essences of anguish uh, until you have good suffixes, and then just craft damage over time or fire damage on the prefix, and you have a very, very good scepter. We can make it even cheaper, and that is with the magic of the singularity. It has a very huge flat lightning damage to spells, and if you recall, we are using Shaper of Flames right here, which says all damage can ignite. And as long as we're doing more fire damage than any other element, uh, that will turn into ignite. And that ignite damage will get scaled by all of our increased fire. So even if you ignite with lightning damage, the ignite that happens is fire damage. We don't care that this happens to be lightning damage. As long as the number for the flat damage on our skill is bigger for the fire than any other element. And that's all that matters. And then the key with the Singularity is it starts up at base level 62 with the Platinum Scepter. You can set up your loot filter, and I, I will have a loot filter with the final build guide. I will have a customized one that comes along with the build. It's basically just a regular loot filter that is showing Platinum Scepters. <laughs> Might be a couple other things that I look out for. But you can pick up Platinum Scepters, and they are very, very easy to chance. In two days of Solo Cell Found, uh, a few weeks ago, I made five Singularities in two days of Solo Cell Found. Very, very easy to get. Also has 100% increased damage with hits and ailments. So, and not to mention, increased cast speed and reduced mana cost of skills. At low, low level, this is really, really hard to beat. And two of these singularities, max price that I've ever seen a singularity, beginning of the league is 15 chaos. Even if that goes up, you can make your own. It's not that hard to make. You can chance it yourself. And it's not even the best in slot. Now, my friend has been testing this build in Solo Cell Found, and he also called out... A, a thing that he saw in the league announcement, and I want to call this out, is we saw this. Item sells for an additional unique of that base type. So in Crucible Next League, you want to pick up every single Platinum Scepter. Like if you're still looking for singularities, pick up, pick up every single Platinum Scepter. Singularity is the only unique Platinum Scepter. So if you find that, guaranteed, 100%, easy peasy. It is going to be very, very easy to get. Chance orbs are kind of valuable for early map progression, so you might not want to spend those, but you can just do that. That's a really great tip right there. I got all of my Void Stones with Singularity. It will carry you to about 5 million dot DPS, but that's about as far as it gets. That's what we want to start off with right there. After that, you're going to set up your trade searches. You're going to be looking for a Fractured Suffix, ideally. Fractured Dot Multi is the best. You can also go for Fractured Fire Damage on the Prefix. That's not too bad. If you find Fractured uh, plus Fire, if your Fire Trap is not plus one yet, they're all good. This is the thing is there's so much flexibility and you can have 10, 15, 20 million DPS with Scepters that are not as good as the one that I have here. And both of these Scepters I crafted myself for about four to eight Divines. I don't remember exactly how many Reforges I did or how many Suffixes can't be changed, but it was four to eight Divines for each one of these. These are very close to basically perfect for this build. They're just not that hard to craft. Obviously, the demand on the Fracture will go up if the demand on the build is up, but any of these mods Fractured is good for you. Fractured Burning Damage, Fractured Fire Dot Multi, Dot Multi, Damage Over Time. You know, if you get a high flat Fire Damage to Spells or increased Fire Damage on the Prefix, any of those are good, and then you just basically spam Single Scorched Fossils. That is the easiest thing. Unfortunately, due to the nerf to Harvest... Um, you can't, if you have extra yellow or purple juice, you can just do the purple juice because there is no reforged fire, fire more common. Uh, it's like, you're, it's not going to guarantee you more than one fire mod, right? So this is not the ideal way to do it. Plenty of ways to get fossils in the game right now. Uh, everything from heist, expedition, legion, like I think literally all the content in the game gives you fossils better than delve, but delve is the, I think only source or by far the best source of resonators. And resonators do be getting kind of expensive these days, right? So here's what you do is uh, you, where are the, the nodes? So you want to take the delve nodes right here. This is the big one. Mining byproducts, sulfite veins and chests in your maps have a 10% chance to contain an equal amount of azurite. And then you can also have sulfite infusion right here which will grant you additional sulfite as well. This is not too necessary. And just having mining byproducts You'll get tens and tens of thousands of Azurite just per week uh, passively. And all you have to do is then go to Nico and you'll have, like, I, I think I did it for only a couple weeks and I had like a 200,000 Azurite. And then you can just go to Nico, shift click, and then you can just buy resonators like this. And uh, like, I didn't delve at all this league and I was able to like almost fully upgrade everything. 
just from doing the uh, the mining byproducts. Yeah, Delve is actually like the ironically like the worst place for fossils. The one thing that is kind of weak that we don't mind but we don't care about is spell damage. Due to the way that ignite works, spell damage does not scale the size of an ignite. There is a spe special property that spell damage you'll see right here. Modifiers to spell damage apply to the burning ground, but it doesn't apply to the ignite. So we just don't care about spell damage generally, but it's not bad to get. Really all we're looking for here on the scepter is good suffixes. But if I hit great prefixes, you know, I'm good on that. Um, this is the cheapest way to craft like a decent scepter. You know, the ideal. All right, we're done. So anyway, it's really easy. It, it, it is really, really easy. Like, <laughs> and this is good enough, right? This 100% just, this just gets you going, right? This is an amazing starter scepter that this will take you to all of your void stones. And that's it. That's all you got to do, man. The Eye of Malice is a very special, awesome helmet for this build. The reason for that is this line entirely. We do not care about the exposure. One out of four times. It's fine. You can just do that. Um, but, you know, your exposure is only going to be one out of four times. I, you know, I don't like conditional damage as much. You know, I try to get it as reliable as possible, right? But if you want to go for a different implicit on your gloves, you can do that if you want to replace the fire exposure right there. But I, I don't like relying this. The reason why we use this helmet Nothing is even close. I have tested triple elevated increased damage with nearby enemies, take nearby enemies minus res, insane helmets, and nothing is even remotely as good as the Eye of Malice. The reason why the Eye of Malice is so good is because this build in my current configuration has minus 136 monster elemental resistance. Because we have two curses, we have Scorched Ground, we have, um, we have Combustion, and we have very strong exposure and probably some other sources I'm forgetting as well. Minus 136, right? Everything in the game, even an Uber that you rolled to have additional res will still have negative res. And so even an Uber, right? Is has start, Uber starts with 50 res, minus 136. So they are at negative 86 res. The 50% increased, the way that increase works, is it doesn't... Increase doesn't mean, it means increase the magnitude. Think of it as a vector. Think of it as, um, as an absolute value that then is multiplied by the, uh, you know, by the sign on it, right? So the negative 86 multiplied times 1.5, even an uber boss will have negative 129 res. And any other normal monster that has lower res than that will actually hit the negative 200 res cap. However, Eye of Malice is not incredible for hardcore, right? There are very few defensive characteristics about it. It does have evasion, so you can use Spell Suppression Mastery. That could be nice. And, you know, if you want to lean into Ghost Shrouds or something like that, more power to you. If you are struggling to get this in Soul Cell Found, or if you want to get tankier, we can do something like this. I crafted this this morning for very, very, very quickly. Technically, it cost me two Divines because I did do a Reforge with the Veiled Chaos Orb, but you could craft this total thing for much, much less than that. I bought this base for one Divine for perfect fractured spell suppression but you can go for anything else if you want to you can go for fractured life fractured res and then uh i chose to you don't have to do this i chose to craft this with essence of loathing you could craft it with whatever else you want to uh essence of envy for chaos res whatever but i just thought essence of loathing would be fun for mana reservation and then i did substances can't be changed veiled chaos orb unveiled physical damage reduction while focused even better would be a hybrid armor evasion base and then i took fizz taken as fire and unique enemy increased flammability ability curse effect this is like a non-damage helmet but this is the direction that i would recommend if you're in hardcore so we can get much more physical damage reduction we can get more life we have access to spell suppression much more comfortably this is the direction that i would recommend you can go that direction we do lose a good amount of damage but even with all of the all of the less damage options we can still stay in like the 10 to 20 million dps range you know if you're in hardcore whatever fracture you want just buy the cheapest fracture base that has a mod you care about Use any essence you want and just go for something like that on the implicits. And this this will make you very, very tanky. And I want to present that as an option. Even tankier and you're willing to sacrifice a little bit more damage here as well is I would recommend going this direction. So this is like the cheap, tanky, like hardcore style option. Uh, obviously, you know, I would prefer an armor base, but this is just what I happen to have. If you've ever played Righteous Fire, you know, with the fire trap and da-da-da-da and all of those options, this is basically the direction that you would want to go. 
if you want to go like big tanky and you actually the clear becomes better frost blink actually ends up with more damage when you do this and you don't actually have to craft this helmet like this this allows us to still get very solid damage by having a seven link i don't have the exact helmet right here because it is annoying to craft it is not cheap but this would be an aspirational thing uh that i would probably shoot for if i were in hardcore is go for a helmet like this so what i did here to craft this is this is a, a six link helmet Right? It's four links plus burning damage plus trap and mine damage. This also gives us armor. We get, you know, we can get plus level of socketed gems. Uh, the ideal unveil there would be plus two. And then we can get additional life on the prefix there. This can make you, you know, nice and chunky and tankier on top of that. If you wanted to, you could even go for the, the PDR well focused mod that I have right there. To make this, to level this up even more, you can make this a seven link, which if you crafted this with essence of horror, you get the socketed gems deal more elemental damage and i this is not this is an example helmet that is not for this build it's for the righteous fire setup but it gives you an idea of what you're going to go for is you could do socketed gems deal 30 percent elemental damage with an essence of horror until you hit ideally uh trap and mine damage and then you can do suffixes can't be changed reforge fire and then go for the burning damage as well that will give you three sockets on the bottom right the socketed 30 percent more elemental the burning damage and the trap and mine damage, and then go for anything you want on the prefix. That will give you a pseudo seven link in your helmet. You get really good damage. Uh, you still get solid damage. It's not going to compare to skin of Lords, but you can do, you can go this direction if you want to play it in hardcore. And then what the reason why we do this helmet is uh, I think we're done with the helmets. This is the, this is the segue into the body armors. You can go for a body armor like this. So even better, actually, would, instead of the mana reservation efficiency of skills, would be the flat physical damage reduction. Uh, that's what I would actually recommend for even more PDR. But I crafted this really quick. And it's just, it's really pretty. I don't want to craft over it. This would be an aspirational body armor. This did not cost me very much to craft. So I bought the fractured spell suppression, fractured T2 spell suppression. This base that was already, I mean, you know, I bought it later on in the league. But this base that already had five white sockets and fractured T2 spell suppression, it was less than five divines. Since we have more spell suppression access here, you could even go for fractured tier three. You could go for a fractured anything, right? I just always want to make it clear. Anything fractured, you could go for fractured essence life or anything. And then I crafted this with essences of loathing, which give us the mana reservation efficiency. The key and why I would recommend going this direction, if you are in the hardcore environment, is I'm currently not running grace. With my flasks up, I have 55% evasion without grace. But if you really care about being, you know, if you're in hardcore, right, I recommend running grace in addition. And it's not that hard to fit it in. Big part of that is because we're going to get the new mana reservation efficiency node right here. We get the 12% global mana reservation efficiency. I am currently not even using an enlighten. I took it out. With that mana reservation efficiency and using an enlighten and crafting your helmet and your body armor with essence of loathing, you can fit in grace in addition to all of the other auras that I'm already running, <laughs> which is bonkers, right? So you can fit that in and something like this, uh, increased aura effect, all that type of stuff, especially if you go for a helmet. I, I currently have 5,400 life with a helmet and a body armor that have zero life on them. This puts me over 6k life, just like this, right? And this isn't even mid-maxed. You can become very resilient, you know, and then choose the helmet. You know, you could still six like the fire, the fire trap in this body armor, or you could pseudo six or pseudo seven link it in the helmet. And that would allow you to transition if you really cared and you care just about clearing and being absolutely crazy bonkers, mega clear everything. I'm just going to comment on this very quickly. You can do something like single or double corrupting a bronze live and just putting your frost blink in here. You can hit like a level 36 frost blink or something stupid like that. You could just unequip fire trap at that point and frost blink is going to do everything except for, you know, end game bosses. This is not the way that I built this character, but if that's what you care about, you can just do that. Uh, yeah, we can get 50% life. Actually, that's a good point. We can use the 15, the new 15% life mastery. So you can get some life here as well. Um, really, really big evasion. So that's an option. So those are the non skin of the Lords alternatives. And there's also Diallo's malification. Diallo's is really great because we care about the gem levels. The ideal body armor, this, <laughs> this is peak performance. You might not like what it looks like, but the ideal body armor that I recommend is a skin of the Lords with Eldritch battery with the colors of three green, two red, and one blue. There's a good chance. And the main reason why I'm focusing so hard on body armors, there's a very, very good chance that they are particularly expensive next league due to the probably impending nerf of the, of devouring diadem 
you know, rarity. So Eldritch Batter is going to be even more desired. There's going to be, you know, if this build ends up being very popular, you know, hopefully it is, if this build does end up being very, very popular, then, you know, everyone's going to be gunning for this item. And I want to make it very clear that as this is an SSF viable build, there are many, many alternatives. And you can do spectacular, great damage, become very defensive by, you know, taking advantage of other things. But this is the best. The reason why Skin of the Lords is the best, that, and it's very, very hard to compete with, is we get a Keystone. Eldritch Battery solves our mana entirely, right? As long as we have enough energy shield, then we don't care about mana cost. We don't have to go craft mana cost on our rings, mana cost on our amulet, da da da, -da. You know, Fire Trap is a pretty expensive skill. Like, 103 mana for my Fire Trap, 100% solved <laughs> with Eldritch Battery. That's one of the reasons. The other one is the 100% global defense is actually really nice. This gives me more armor, functionally, than even this body armor, actually. The 100% global is actually pretty wild. Um, and then the big key here, and if you've ever played a League Starter spell skill or you just want to scale your spells really easy, since spells scale so reliably and comfortably with gem levels, that's what we care about initially, right? Up until level 30, that's what we care about for a Fire Trap. Putting plus two level of all socketed gems with an Empower makes Empower level six, you know, if it's level four, so plus five socketed active gems. Plus the fire trap, getting the plus two, and then the plus two, and then the plus six. Very, very easy for that, right? That's why Skin Lords is the best. We get the Eldritch Battery. We get the plus two level socketed. Now, the number one thing is uh, our ideal links here are Fire Trap, Swift, Swift Affliction, Trap and Mind Damage, Burning Damage, Empower, and Combustion. That's our ideal setup, but we have a lot of flexibility. For the colors, we can use Efficacy. We can use Life Tap, actually. We can, you know, this, we're already using Burning Damage. We can use Deadly Ailments. Deadly Ailments only works for the Ignite and not the Burning Ground, but it is still, it's a 55% more damage multiplier. It's not, you know, nothing to sneeze at. Or we could even toss in Ignite Proliferation support. And there may, there's probably other support gems that I'm missing, but we are pretty resilient against the colors. We don't need these exact colors. They are the best, but there's other options. I do want to call out that we cannot use Cruelty. Path of Building will tell you to use Cruelty. Cruelty does not work on traps. It is a local buff for your character. It does not work for the trap. So don't use Cruelty. That's the ideal body armor. I want to call out that there are a lot of different colors that we can use. We're very resilient to a lot of that. So mix and match. We can also do things. The Mage Bane is really, really good. Helps us cap our spell suppression. You know, we can do any keystone that doesn't break the build is okay. We can, you know, Elemental Overload. That's great. We can use, uh, I wouldn't use Mind Over Matter. You get Rune band Binder is fine, right? We don't care about Rune Binder is fine. Divine Shield is fine. Don't use Agnostic. Don't use Supreme Ego. Don't use the Eternal Youth. The ones that clearly break the build, right? Unwavering Stance is great. You become stun immune. With Call to Arms, you could put Infernal Cry on your left click, and then you're good to go as well. There's so many options that are viable. Now, if mana becomes uncomfortable, what do I do? So you're going to need some unreserved mana. I took my mana as far as I could for reserving as much as possible. But, you know, Precision... Not necessary at all. You can drop Precision. Same thing with Flesh and Stone. Not necessary at all. And then we actually get a decent mana boost, or a mana buffer. And then all you really got to do is there is this non-channeling mana cost right here. If you have that on both of your rings and an amulet, that's minus 21 on the mana cost. It makes a really, really big difference. And you're generally pretty comfortable. The other thing is you can just alternate your pathing. I was playing around with this a little bit earlier. Is we are pathing down here. We're, you know, we're, we're grabbing these nodes. These nodes are not mandatory. They're nice, but they are absolutely not mandatory for the build. There is an alternate pathing that you can do that you could, like, you could skip all of these nodes, right? And then you could just path around the outside. That would allow you to take Eldritch Battery if you really wanted to. You could take Whispers of Doom, and then you go down here and you still have access to all this. Now, it is a little worse, but if you really want Eldritch Battery, it's not that much worse. These nodes are nice, but not mandatory whatsoever. That's an alternate pathing that you can do without really sacrificing the meat of the build. The meat of the, like the way that this build works is the damage comes from over here primarily. Like this is almost all the damage nodes. Down here, right? This is life, spell suppression, life, uh, reservation, spell suppression, and a little bit of damage from Master Sapper. There's a lot of flexibility in this build. Like really, as long as you have the nodes here and you know, you have the nodes here, this is this is movable. The follow-up, the SSF friendly version that I recommend as an alternative to a Diala's or a Skin of the Lords. This is the I want to go more damage. 
option that if skin lords are just way too expensive, if Dialas is too expensive early, and you want to get a little bit tankier, right? Because Dialas is just like, it's a paper item, right? You can go for plus one level of socketed active gems with plus one level of socketed support gems. Okay, Warlord has active, Redeemer has, has support. However, if you are rolling this yourself with alterations, you want, what you want to see is you see this waiting, 250.4%. Ugh, cringe, yikes, ew. But if you look on an Elder item, you'll see that it has 0.65%. It's actually 50% easier to hit on an Elder mod, uh, on an Elder base. Yeah, if, if you really care about the other mods here, Fizz taken as, anything like that, you can go for those bases. The other thing is you just search for the bases that just have that mod. It is generally not a very desired mod, and it's not hard to, like, I bought each of these bases for less than 20 chaos this morning. Just, like, no one, no one cares. There's, there are dozens of them. And you can alteration spam very, very easily for them as well. And then all you got to do, all you got to do, you just use this magical little Awakener's Orb right here. And these are currently 90 to 100 chaos. Uh, double influenced items are much less popular these days. It's not particularly expensive to make because of the rise of Eldritch uh, bases. So all you do is like your better base, like it doesn't matter which one, ensure that you only have one influence mod before you do this. So make sure there's one that says shapers and only one that says elders on this. You don't want, you know, if you see two elder or two shaper, then, you know, there's a 50, 50 chance what, what it brings over. And then you, I got my better base here, the full dragon scale. So I want to keep that. So I click on the conjurer's vestment first, and then I click on the full dragon scale and boom, look at that. I got recover. That's actually pretty decent. Obviously I would like more life or open anything. But I got recover ES on kill. I got flat physical damage reduction. I get armor. I get evasion. I get the plus one, plus one. And this is very, very usable. Yeah, you could annul it. But this is going to make you tankier, actually, than a Skin of the Lords. And the damage is going to be pretty comparable. Uh, skin of the Loyal is also okay. You can get a Skin of Loyal and double corrupt them. Plus one socketed. It has the global defenses. It's it's the weaker version of a Skin of Lords that then you can use a Blessing of Chayula and upgrade. Uh, which then is a risk, right? Because... You don't know what keystone you're going to get. You could get uh, Supreme Ego or something, and then you're very sad. No, he will not create a guide. It's all a lie. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to... Guys, you have to be here right now. If you don't like, comment, subscribe, and sign up for Patreon and my OnlyFans and my Tinder and my Grinder right now, all of this content disappears. So be there. Get there right now. It's going to disappear. There's a timer. Uh-oh, guys. It's about that OnlyFans. What am I, what am I posting? Hey, whatever, whatever you asked for. So next up is we'll do the jewelry. Jewelry is actually really, really easy with this build. The easiest thing right off the rip is we can use the pyre. Pyre is great. It rolls from 60 to 80% increased burning damage. And then by using elemental damage catalysts, we can get that up to 96% increased burning damage. The other really nice thing about the pyre is since it has cold damage converted to fire damage, that immediately will make our frost blink do more fire than cold damage because like even though it's only 48 percent conversion because we're scaling increased fire damage it scales that fire damage way higher than the the cold damage you know we want a mouse or a frost link make sure it's doing more fire damage than cold damage to get that bigger ignite and then with the pyre we actually don't need cold to fire and you can do something you can do efficacy you can do any of these other ones you can link life tap whatever um burning damage is fine Burning damage is also, like I said, burning damage is a rectangle. Ignite is a square. We'll scale both the burning ground for fire trap and the ignite off of fire trap. So it's just really, really good for that. I do not recommend Barracks Respite. I talked about this a little while ago. The way that Ignite Prolif works, uh, the, the gem itself, Ignite Pro Proliferation, is the enemy that dies on the ground will still continue burning, and enemies that walk over it will take on that ignite. Um, it'll spread within the radius of 20, and it will stay there for a duration. Even after the monster dies, it'll stay there on the ground. Uh, whereas Barracks Respite, it will proliferate. So like if it's dense, Barracks Respite is better because it'll co constantly proliferate. As soon as the monster dies, if there isn't a monster next to that death, that proliferation is also over. I do not like Barracks. But anyway, Pyre's kind of mid as well. It's very, very, you know, it's a one alchemy ring, but it is kind of mid. Great starter. You can even use two Pyres if you want to. But... Better than that is something like this. These are very, very easy to make. I actually have the perfect two examples for the two ways that you want to craft this. So this is the better one, and then this is the cheaper one. Where is it? Uh, increased fire damage right here. So these are the two ways that you would want to craft rings right here is you can use a, just buy a fractured base, hit it with some resistance catalyst, and then I hit it with some essences of anger until I was happy with the suffixes. 
You can buy fractured chaos res. You can buy, buy fractured anything, right? Look for something that you care about. Hit it with a couple essences of anger until you got nice mods. Craft whatever else on it, and you're good to go. Like, this total ring cost was like 60 chaos. This is nothing. And two of these will just feel really good. Good res, decent damage, nice to go. And then this is the better, more expensive version. What we did here is I used Essence of Horror to craft the uh, this ring right here. This is with uh, Fertile Catalyst for the Life and Mana modifiers. It's, you know, the base was still really cheap. Like, this is a very, very cheap ring. You know, still like, you know, 20, 30, 40 chaos. Hit it with Essences of Horror. I, I, I just, it was actually just the damage over time multiplier and the lightning res. I did suffixes can't be changed and a veiled chaos orb. I'm a very big fan of veiled chaos orbs. It makes crafting very, very quick. I didn't care if I got a, a veiled prefix or a suffix, just whatever, you know, spent two divines and I unveiled endurance charges and endurance charge on kill and I craft increased damage and that's it. So like the total cost of this ring, 2.5 divines. This is like the high end ring. Like this is the cheaper one. You know, this is like a hundred chaos max. And this is like two, 2.5 divines. And that's really all you need to do for your rings. It's uh, it's super, super easy. And so that's, that's the rings there. And then, like I said, if you don't have Eldritch battery on the prefix, I would craft non-channeling skills minus mana cost. And that's it. Super, super easy. So this is a very nice amulet. I bought this for 20, 25 divines. It just looked really neat. And I wanted to have something pretty, pretty awesome for a showcase. But it's actually overkill. As I explained earlier, with my current setup, I have a level 31 fire trap. There are pretty stark diminishing returns on the level of fire trap for, um, for damage. And we can demonstrate this very, very easily. If you look at the damage right here, fire trap, 2.567 fire damage per second. That's only the burning ground. It's not the, uh, the fire damage. And this is, you know, it's like a 20, 20 to 30 divine amulet. It's really, really nice. It's a, it was a cool thing I just wanted to buy. I bought this fractured base this morning for 150 chaos. I just hit it with Scorch Fossils until I hit fire skill gems and increased fire damage. Just Scorch Fossils on a fractured damage over time base that has 150 uh, until I hit fire skill gems and anything else that I liked. Look at the damage, 2.56 million, 2.56 million. That's the diminishing returns on the gem levels. It's almost identical. So the dot multi is giving us as much damage as the plus gem level. This is absolutely overkill. You don't need it. You can just do something like this. And like previously, anything fractured on the, amb on, on the amulet, right? If you get fractured level of all fire or you get fractured increased fire or anything like that, fractured life even, hit it with Scorch Fossils, hit something like this, you're good to go. If you really want, reserve as many ores as possible, be more comfortable with all that, you can always just use an Ashes. Ashes is totally fine. Obviously, for many reasons, I'm not recommending that in the League Starter, but it's a fine amulet. Really relieves a lot of mana pressure and, you know, yada yada. But obviously, not that that's not the recommendation to go for. Really, just find dot multi and plus one fire. Um, you can craft it yourself, and it's really all you need, right? Like, this, this thing cost me a total of, what, what did I say, like one divine this morning? Yeah, this is great, right? It's almost identical damage to, to the really, really nice one. So next up is the gloves. Welcome to crafting in Modern Path of Exile. Uh, for anything that doesn't require very, very specific influence mods or anything like that, this is how you craft in PoE. If there's one thing you need to take away from this is buy a fractured base. Don't You don't have to buy the exact fractured base. Fractured bases are super common. You don't have to buy the exact one that I have. You don't have to follow what's on exactly on the guide. With this, right, I could... Any of those mods, obviously two of those are, are not drop, but any of those mods, if they're fractured, fractured lightning res, if I hit that, I'm happy. Fractured life, you can get even more life. Fractured life, that's great. And then, since this is an essence craft, um, this is the high-end version. You don't need the socketed high-end version, but this is with an essence of delirium right here. What this does is it has socketed gems deal 30% more damage. We have this in our gloves right here. All I did was I bought the fractured base with spell suppression. I think I hit this in like one or two essences. I hit some spell suppression. Then I did suffixes can't be changed. As always, veiled chaos orb. And then I um then you craft conversion on gloves. Before the unveil, you craft conversion to block one of the conversions. That's the highest weight. Convert, you know, fizz to cold, anything like that. Doesn't matter which one you craft. I unveiled physical damage reduction while focused. You can go for whatever you want. Um, you know, socketed gem. Socketed gems is probably the best. Socketed AoE gems. That's probably the best unveil for Frostblink damage. And that makes the Ignite from the Frostblink deal 30% more damage. It's a pseudo 5 link. That's all we're going for. And you, you can start lower level without the essence of Delirium. 
buy a fractured base. Doesn't matter if it has life on it, spell suppression, chaos res, whatever. Cheapest one that you can get. Hit it with a single essence of delirium and you have a pseudo five link and you're good to go. If you don't even want an essence of delirium, just use it. You can use an essence of loathing if you want to. Recommended mods is uh, Eater of Worlds. We go for fire exposure on hit. This allows us to not use Wave of Conviction or anything else for exposure. I do know that Eye of Malice has a one in four chance of doing exposure, but I want I like that 100% chance. And then if you make this perfect, right, you use uh, Orbs of Conflict. It can actually be a bigger exposure, you know, a, a very big exposure. I think it goes to like 15%, right? Ideally, unique enemy in your presence, fire dot multi, because we just want more damage. It's a bigger number for, uh, you know, for bosses, but you can just go for not while unique enemies in your presence. Just we want the fire dot multi. And that's what I recommend on the implicits on the gloves. They're very, very easy to make. You know, I spent 2.5 divines on this because I bought a fracture and I used the, uh, used the Veiled Chaos Orb, but, you know, for... 50 chaos or less, you can make your own, like super easy. And then very similarly, I don't know, it's really hard for me to get off of boots like this. And the really nice thing about this build is we don't have to. There's, since we're not critting, uh, we don't care about Tailwind, Elusive. Uh, we do like Onslaught. I do like Onslaught here. But these are kind of like the modern fancy boots to me. The Tailwind, Elusive, Onslaught boots, those are the, the old style. Everyone got them, uh, especially if you're a crit-based build. But this is kind of like the direction I like to go these days is... Um, Bought a spell suppression base, you know, but like I said before, you could even go for fractured 35% movement speed. You could go for fractured chaos res, whatever you want to. Shrieking essence of torment right here. We want chance to avoid being shocked. The reason is that for that is the storm shroud jewel. If you don't have fractured spell suppression, I do recommend going until you have spell suppression. Starting from a fractured spell suppression base, it's even easier. Then I did suffixes can't be changed. Veiled chaos orb, really easy. I think I crafted increased life and unveiled onslaught i prefer onslaught it just makes everything a lot more comfortable onslaught is still in the game next league they are only removing onslaught support gem onslaught as a buff is still in the game next league and then the implicits that we prefer are eater of worlds ignite steel damage faster and searing exarch scorch ground while moving the more minus res that they have the better enabling the eye of malice and then the reason why we want the chance to avoid being shocked is the modern way to be ailment immune is we use Storm Shroud right here. Modifiers to chance to avoid being shocked apply to all elemental ailments. This makes us immune to Ignite, Scorch, Chill, Frozen, Brittle, Shock, and Sap. And so if we have at least 50% here, we can combine that with an Abyss Jewel like this. Uh, and this is actually the Abyss Jewel that I recommend, like almost exactly, is... This is actually perfect. <laughs> That's crazy. Chance to avoid being shocked just between the boots and the one chance to avoid being shocked right here. I am fully immune to all elemental ailments with the Storm Shroud, just like that. So that solves all of those problems right there. I also really like phasing on kill right here. If you just want to use a Quartz Flask, you don't need to go for that. But that is the uh, last up, at least for the gear that we equip, AKA our equipment, is the belt. And we have a lot of options with the belt right here. Lot, a lot of options with the belt, all perfectly tuned to your preferences, whatever you like, my friends. My preference is what I'm wearing. And then there are some other alternative options. I like to not die. I like to feel solid, beefy, chunky, thick. In fact, this is the, I've used this belt the entire league on all of my builds. <laughs> I haven't touched this belt on, like, I don't taunt. Like, I, I haven't taunted in a long time. I've been using this belt for over two months at this point. I literally just take it and I put it on every single build. It is a Hunter Stygian Vise. You can craft this like before. Horta crafting station, recrafting sucks now. Previously, you could do reforge life, more common. That was great. It was really easy to hit the max life and the max, max increased life. We can double check on the hunter mod right here. Oh, it's only 84. It's only 84 for the tier one increased life. We just hit this ideally with pristine fossils, but you can use essences or whatever. And we just go ideally, uh, you know, fertile catalyst on there, max life, max life and you know res and strength and all that type of stuff a thing about this build is it is a little uncomfortable for strength and dexterity so i do recommend if you land on uh, particularly strength strength is the biggest thing that's harder to get dex isn't too bad but if you do hit like a high tier of dex or strength on something keep that dude i do recommend keeping that stygian and vise this is my generally recommended thing there are alternatives you know we've seen people play around with this tech a little bit in the past couple leagues is using a micro distillery belt it's not Godlike, because we're not Pathfinders, what you can extra do is roll this until you get flasks have increased effect as an explicit mod. But flasks have increased effect right here. Can't use one of your flasks. If you don't mind dropping one of your flasks, you can do this. Flasks will be 20% stronger. 
this in certain situations, if you have just like a Quicksilver, you want to get, you know, you want to tank up a little bit. Uh, this can actually be pretty nice if you roll it pretty hard. I just always want to call out that this belt exists. It's not like I'm hard recommending it. We do like a lot of flasks here, so I'm not like crazy recommending it at this point, but I just want to always remind people that it exists. If you are uncomfortable with trap throwing speed, and like, I don't mind this, right? Like you can see this animation speed. We only throw traps on like essences and bosses. That's like it. And like, you know, preloading a strong box. And this is the animation, right? You can, I'm, I'm holding walk as I'm throwing it. This is how long it takes. This is the default throwing speed. I don't mind. I don't think it's that bad. Um, I've seen people bitch about it. Now, if you are a an on-hit trapper, 100%, you want to throw your traps. You want to just like, man, I got traps all over the place. I only got to throw one trap. I don't need to invest any mods into that. I don't really care. We're clear. We're a Frostblank build, right? We're clearing with Leaf Slam Frostblank. We're good to go, man. One thing that you could do is you can invest into expedition, Expeditious Munitions, and this will give you, what's a total? This will give you 20% increased trap throwing speed. This can be pretty nice, uh, so you can get 20% right here. And then the other thing is you can use a Deafening Essence of Zeal, ideally, and then this will give you up to, is it 25%? 21%. You can get 21% trap and mine throwing speed. And then if you have speed modifiers on top of that, it will go to 25% if you use that. And so, you know, if you really, really just can't stand, you know, if if that amount of time for throwing one trap per map is just too much and it's like, ah, I got a need for speed. Me and Vid Diesel got a date tonight and I just got to go fast. Like if you're just chugging eight bottles of Nas and that's the only way you know how to play Path of Exile, you can toss this puppy on and uh, yeah, you can see how it, it's faster, right? It is 100% faster. You can see how fast it is. It's, uh, it's pretty snappy. And I, I think investing more than this 25% is absolute overkill uh we only throw maximum five maps per, five traps per map um if you really want that you know just to demonstrate it again is you know this is the regular and then this is with the 25 percent that's a little bit snappier right it's, it's a little bit faster but we very very rarely rarely throw uh throw traps not a big deal doesn't matter i think it's overkill and then the other thing if you just got a need for damage and all you care about is that Big, big damn number. That damn number. Alessia's Delight right here is a 1 to 5 Chaos belt. Drops from Maven every single time. Everyone does not care about this belt, generally, because it doesn't offer anything, really, in, in terms of defensive characteristics. It's a very, very cheap belt. However, we do generate Frenzy Charges with this build because we have Master Sapper, which is going to be moving right here next league. We're already ready for it. When we're bossing, if we're throwing traps more often, we can have decent uptime on our, on our Frenzy Charges. And, you know, you can go for Frenzy Charge on Ring if you want to keep Frenzy Charges up. And what this will do is it'll give you plus one max Frenzy Charges. And then if you really want to invest into it, you can take Frenzy Charge like right there as well. It will convert Frenzy Charges into Affliction Charges. And they give you 8%, it's an 8% more damage multiplier and 8% more effective non-damaging ailments, you know, which makes your chills and shocks stronger. And instead of a 4% more damage uh, on a regular Frenzy Charge, it's in 8%. And so this will make you do more damage if you really care about it. And since they're so cheap, you can just double corrupt them. You don't care what you get. And hey, maybe I'll get like Malevolence Aura Effect or something cool like that. And then, oh, I got a sick-ass belt, right? If you just want to do more damage. That's a really great cheap way to get a lot of damage very, very early with this build. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did miss this. You can use Legacy of Fury. I know everyone constantly asks about it because they like Explodey. I personally feel like with Ignite Proliferation support on your Frostblink especially, and if you really want even more Prolif, you want to throw more traps, you can put Ignite Prolif on your Fire Trap as well. Legacy Fury, Fury is nice. It feels good. It's fun. You know, it's fun explodey. Uh, it's generally a pretty cheap item, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so common. It gets very cheap very, very early. Uh, I believe these drop off of Maven. 30% movement speed. The Scorch, you know, it's a stronger effect of Scorch. Gets up to a minus 15. So the Scorch is free. We don't have to do Scorch Ground. But we do lose everything that we have on these rare boosts. We lose spell suppression. We lose life. We lose any res. Um, has it got a little bit of res? There's no res on these boots, right? So, I mean, if you want some explodey, it isn't a, a source of it. But, you know, it's just going to make the build less tanky. And then, yeah, that is all of the... How do you deal with ailments when using a unique belt? I mean, you do this. Check this out. Boom. Problem solved. Professional tip right here. You can put an abyss jewel in your tree. <laughs> problem solved that is all of our equipped gear and then regarding flasks we got uh we got a lot of flexibility this is my bossing configuration just a, a fun thing someone in, in a youtube comment tried to call me out 
and they expose themselves for being ignorant. They tried to call me out for having two life flasks while I was fighting Uber Eater. This is actually what the best players in the world do, is they use a life flask that doesn't have a suffix. And what that allows you to do is I can sit here and press it, right? And as long as I have full life, I can spam this flask and it will never consume. And so what I'm doing is I have my instant flask right here, but this flask, I can just spam it. And so when I, I can just walk through Uber Eater tentacles, and as long as I'm spamming my life flask, then I actually just won't die because I'm just always able to hit them. And then I actually like using Soul of Rithlatha, Rithlatha, which allows me to just, I have, I sustain my life flask very nicely while I'm bossing. Yeah, you can just have a spammable flask. And that's, that's what I like to do while I'm bossing. Uber Eater, I like to have a Topaz flask. But my general layout, like at the high end, I like doing something like this. Taste of Hate's really, really good. It's, uh, I think it's just an underused flask even for people that aren't doing physical damage. Not to mention 20% less cold damage taken. I think this is just an amazing flask to use for PDR. At the high end, Progenesis is like the best flask in the whole game. As long as you have good life recovery, you are just 25% tankier. So an armor flask on the granite and then Quicksilver here, you know, whatever. If you don't have phasing on a, an Abyssal, I do recommend something like a Quartz Flask. Any source of phasing, I think, is pretty incredible. Other thing, if you don't have a Progenesis, something like that. We do have a decent amount of evasion. You can see with no grace or anything, currently I have, where is it, 54% evasion, right? Like, that's nothing to sneeze at. And like I said earlier, if you go in the more defensive, hardcore, viable direction, you can craft your Essences of Loathing, all that, and you can actually sneak grace in an addition. And then you're like 75, 80% evasion if you want to go like the hardcore direction. But this is the layout that I like for like general mapping like this. There's other stuff you can use. You know, Orias End is fun. It's overkill, but it can be nice if you're doing like 100% Delirious. That explodey does really help, you know, when the monsters are, you know, not wanting to die. It's a pretty pretty nice flask, but it's a lux luxury flask, of course. I recommend no matter what build you play, no matter what you're doing, whenever you're doing it, Progenesis, basically put it into every single build that you can. But obviously that's, you know, luxury flask, but later, but it's like the best flask in the game. And then this is like my general setup that I would recommend going for. The PDR from Taste of Hate, I think it's, it's just too good, right? I think it's awesome. And there isn't really another flask. You know, if, if you're low on damage, you know, use a sulfur flask, do whatever. But uh, this is generally what I, what I like to recommend here. So Cluster Jewel, very, very flexible. So we have uh, this one, I just had it and, and it was like fine. And go for fire damage or elemental damage, cluster jewel base. The main reason we're using a large cluster jewel, we don't get that much out of it, right? Was this 25% damage, 12%, and 30%? Like, in terms of like the ROI on the investment here, it's a little mid, right? Like, these aren't crazy build enabling, but does give us some efficiency for using small cluster jewels, which, as you can see, we really like. I want to cap my spell suppression, right? Unfortunately, Path of Exile in 2023, basically unplayable without max spell suppression. So we're using a small spell suppression jewel right here. And then because of the loss of reservation efficiency masteries, like we lose the Skitterbots one right here, we are going to use a small jewel as well for mana reservation efficiency. We can do malevolence here. We can do determination here. And then you can go for a different enchant on your helmet. So I'm using the determination enchant. But interchangeable with that is you could go for a malevolence enchant and then you could go for determination here. So there's diminishing returns as you invest into it, right? So you want to have like initial mana reservation efficiency per, uh, you know, per aura. So, you know, malevolence here, determination here, or vice versa, something like that is going to be how you're going to, um, yeah, flesh and stone is also good, but flesh and stone is a smaller aura. So I'm not like, not super, super, you know, it's only 25%, right? So you don't get that much out of it. In terms of the small jewels, this is very close to best in slot. You want fire damage, damage over time, increased damage, increased life, and then damaging ailments deal damage faster. That's the big one that you're going to be going for. Definitely have a Corrupted Blood Jewel, of course. Find a jewel that has fractured fire dot multi. Find a jewel that has fractured maximum life. Hit it. Just hit it with Scorch Fossils. Hit it with Reforged Life. Uh, don't do Reforged Life. That's like, you'll get like Totem Life. Like Reforged Life is really, really bad in jewels. But just using Scorch Fossils or even, even you can use Reforged Fire. And uh, you know, you'll hit decent things. Um, that's like more SSF. Otherwise, just search for it. And then I'll hit you guys with the, uh, the real thing. Much like the way that modern life works in the year 2023, we don't use our brains. We use the computers. And so if you really want to min-max this, you do this. Uh, I find a jewel that I want to replace. Ah, Viper Bliss, kind of mid. That's for noobs. That's for people that don't respect themselves and they don't care about anything. Was that socket number eight? Check this out. Let the tools work for you. Find best. Boom. Execute. Calculating mod weights. 
boom. Click this. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh my God, look at this. And then I sort by some. Oh, okay, best jewel right there. Okay. And then on top of that, here's all I do. Like it, it pre-generates this thing. And then I can do add stat group and mandatory. And I type maximum life right here because I want maximum life no matter what. And then I can search. And now it's going to find me jewels that do the most damage for me and have life on them. We can turn some certain things off. We can simplify it, customize it ourselves, set the max price to like, you know, three divines, anything like that. Search by that sum. Boom, three divines for, for a good jewel. That's all you got to do, man. Just let the computer work for you. You don't got to think for yourself. <laughs> Welcome to, to modern Path of Exile. Path of Building solves all of it for you. This is very close to a complete build guide. I mean, I can just quickly go over the, uh, the gems here. We're using Infernal Cry because it covers enemies in ash, which makes them take 20% increased fire damage. Also, it makes them explode, so that's really good for clear. Vitality, really nice for life regen. Precision, just gives us a little bit more crit chance. Uh, procs elemental overload. We also get more damage with more auras. That's vi This is very luxury. Phantasmal Leap Slam with faster attacks. Ellie Weakness. We're going to manually cast Ellie Weakness and Flammability. Anomalous Flammability is the best. Skitter Bots. They do, they do chill and shock, and they give us 10% more trap damage. Uh, molten Shell linked with Castle Damage Taken. Level 10 Molten Shell with level 1 Castle Damage Taken. Like I said earlier, Fire Trap, Swift Affliction, Burning Damage, Empower, Combustion, and Trap and Mind Damage. You can use all of these as well. Efficacy, Life Tap, whatever. Then in the gloves with the socketed 30% more damage over time multiplier, we do Frost Blink. Divergent Frost Blink is ideal, but no big deal. The most important thing is a level 21 Frost Blink. 21 0 Frost Blink is better than a 2020 Divergent. So, you know, just prioritize it that way. Gem levels are everything for our damage. Anomalous Combustion is the best. You can use the normal one, of course. Cold to Fire. If you don't have a Pyre, use Cold to Fire. But if you have a Pyre, you don't need Cold to Fire because you do more fire without the Pyre. You only need Cold to Fire if you don't have a Pyre. And then Anomalous Ignite Proliferation Support, just bigger explosions. And then uh, Malevolence, Flesh and Stone, and Determination for our auras right here. Later on, next league, uh, we do have access to more Mana Reservation Efficiency. Actually, with this build, we luckily just took a slap on the wrist. So I think it will be possible to also fit in Grace. Forbidden Jewels? I don't think there's a Forbidden Jewel that we really care about. I mean, Nine Lies, if you, ca if you really care, but... Nothing on Necro. We don't care. We uh, we don't care about anything else that we don't have on Elementalist. If you really wanted to, you could use a flammability on Hit Ring with Profane Bloom. If you really care, but like you lose two jewel sockets, right? And I'd rather have two jewel sockets to make me do more damage and you know use Legacy of Fury or something. Unholy Authority is okay. Um, plus one curse is okay because then you can change your anoint. I'm a we do fairy. use whispers of doom. I, I did do miss my that. Little fairy dance. We use whispers of doom for our anoint. If you get a plus one curse somewhere else, unholy authority, a corrupted amulet, or you path over here and you grab whispers of doom, then you go for uh, deadly techniques down here. All right, I know it was a little abrupt cut off right there, but that was about the end of I think what we need to talk about there for the gear that goes into the build. Uh, the gem should be pretty self-evident from what I've said right there and what is in the POBs. Again, if you have any more questions, please join the Discord or ask me on stream. I really want to see you guys have the most kick-ass league start that you can. Just something comfortable, something successful, and you can have a lot of fun in 3.21. So thanks for watching again. Huge thanks, as always, to all the patrons and all of you guys. Really appreciate all the support that has been pouring in over the past few months especially. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see you guys in the Crucible. Goodbye.